Hello everybody, welcome to my Day Python YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to create a multiple counter fill plot with the color bar as shown in this figure. As always, I already upload this Jupyter number file into my GitHub repository. The link is available in the video description. You can download this file for free and use it as your reference. So here I am at my Jupyter notebook file. First, let us import the libraries. There are no fancy library here. I only use pandas, numpy, and matplotlib. Next, I will load the data set there are two data here my first data is the unstructured triangular grid and the second data is water surface elevation represent four different tide condition which is i call is zeta 1 zeta 2 zeta 3 and zeta 4 okay let's us run these two cells here i create the unstructured triangular grid i have a separate video about this one you can watch my previous video if you need an explanation about creating the unstructured triangular grid now I will make a single counter fill plot. Counter function here is the three counter f, which is the counter fill function on unstructured triangular grid. The input here is the unstructured triangular grid. Zeta 01 is my water surface elevation data, and the C map here is the color map, which is I use the jet color map. Let's us run this cell. Okay, perfect. We are successfully plot the counter fill plot. To make a multiple plot, we only need to specify the variables and rows and end calls inside the subplot function. If we don't specify these two variables, by default, the subplot function will only create a single axis. Now I set the end rows as a 2 and end calls as 2. This will create a total 4 axis. If you don't know the axis, the axis is this square here. Okay, let's rerun this cell. So here I create four axes. So the end rows and in calls is the number of rows and number of column. You can think these two variable the same way as we create a table. So if you need six axes, you can create it by end rows two and end calls uh, three. Or you can create six axes using the end rows three and end calls equals two. All right, because I only need uh, four axes so I will only use the two by two now let us add the counter fill plot into its axis the counter fill function here is the same as the single counter plot as you can see here I'm using the three counter f function and here in the single plot I also use the three counter f function uh, the different things here is the number inside the bracket. AX0,0 means first row and the first column axis. Therefore, this line here will plot my zeta01 data in this axis. Okay, let's try to run this cell. As you can see here, I plot my zeta1 data into this axis. If I want to plot my second zeta or the zeta2 data in this axis, which is the first row in the second column axis I only to specify the x the ax 0 comma 1 and then I plot my zeta data using the three counter f function as we try around the cell all right as you can see here I plot the zeta 2 data here and if I want to plot my zeta 3 data into this axis I need to specify the ax 1 comma 0 this is mean that the second row and the first column as we run this cell and my last data here at ax1,1 so the things that you need to remember here is the first index in python is start from zero so that's why 0, 0 here mean is the first row and the first column and the ax1,1 here mean this the second rows and the second columns okay so that's how to create a multiple counter field plot the basic concept here is specify the total number of rows and total number of columns inside the subplot function and then you plot your data on its axis. Okay, I hope you understand this concept. If you're confused with this concept, you just need to be things as a creating a table. On the second part of distributor notebook file, I customize the access label and text label. I will skip this part because you can instantly understand this part by reading this distributor notebook file. Okay, so this is the final looks of multiple counter fill plot after I customize the labels and as well as the text label. For the last part of this tutorial, I will add a color bar because we use the counter fill plot and the color bar will help the reader later understand what is the meaning of this 
color. The important concept in adding a color bar in a multiple counter fill plot is you should make sure that each color represents the same value in all axes. So what I mean by that? Here I'm using the color map jet from the method lead and if we read the method lead documentation, the color map jet has a color from dark blue into the dark red. The dark blue represents the minimum value and the dark red represents the maximum value. Now, I will check the minimum and maximum value from its SETA dataset and uh, to add a color bar, first we need to create variable from our counter fill plot and then uh, down here I add the color bar. Let's fill on the cell first. So in this figure here, I create the color bar based on the first axis counter fill plot. As you can see here, I create the color variable from my first axis and the dark blue color here represent the minimum value which is the negative 0 2.5 meter below the mean water level and the dark red color here represent the maximum value 0 0.15 meter above the mean water level. However, if I use this color bar to interpret the other counter field plot, it will lead to a wrong interpretation. For the example, the dark red color from this axis here represent the maximum value which is 0 0.15 meter above the mean water level according to this color bar. Actually, the maximum value from this axis here is 0 0.73 meter. Because I plot the set up to data in this axis. Similarly, if we look at this axis here, which is the set up for counter plot, the small dark blue region here represents the minimum value which is negative 0 0.25 meter according to this color bar. However, the minimum value from set up for is negative 0 0.779. Therefore, we can only use this color bar to interpret the color from the first axis here and we cannot use this color bar to interpret the other three axes here. So, the color bar should represent the minimum value and the maximum value from all these axes. So, how to create the color bar that represent the maximum and minimum value from all these axes? We can easily do that using the variable levels inside the tree counter f function. Here I set the levels equal to color level, which is a numpy array I create using numpy.linspace function. The color level here has a 100 values, start from negative 0 0.779, which is the minimum value from all these axes, and the maximum value or the stop variable here is equal to maximum value from this all this axis which is 0 0.733 here i also set the color map equal to color underscore map i do this in case if you don't like with the, the jet color map you can easily change the type of color map here okay let us run this two cell now all right now we can use this color bar to interpret the color in its axis as you can see here we see the maximum value which is the drop rule equal to 0 0.7 meter above the uh, mean water level and here i have the minimum value which is around negative 0 0.7 below the mean water level so in the last two cell i add an annotation text into its uh, figure here and then in the last cell here i save this uh, figure using the fig.setfig function. Alright, so that's all about creating a multiple counter field plot. The important things in creating a multiple counter field plot is first you create the axis using the variable number of rows and end calls here. The important things in creating a multiple counter field plot is first you create your axis by set the total number of rows and columns. Next, you plot your data into its axis and finally you need to make a save color map using the levels variables and then add the color bar. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something useful from this video. See you on the next tutorial video.